Hi, my name is Marcefa and I'm a classical guitar player and welcome to our slur workout. In this session we are going to go through ascending slurs, also called hammer-ons, uh, descending slurs or called pull-offs and then we will finish off mixing both of them. Feel free to use this video during your daily warm-up routine if that helps you and if you follow well the indications it should help you a lot to develop good control of the fingers, strength and precision. So as usual in this workout series we do all the exercises together and I will be playing them in a kind of comfort tempo so not really fast but definitely not extremely slow. And if the tempo feels too fast in the beginning, please use the playback speed here to lower it and start as slow as you need to control all the movements without doing any mistake. I also put together a PDF with the exercise that we are going to do today in case it helps you to go along with the video to read them and have it in front of you or just keep the PDF for you for your future practice. Before we start, if you have not seen yet the tutorial on the slurs, I would recommend that you stop one second here at the video and go ahead and watch it because there I give all the main indications that you need to take care of as we go through this exercise. In that video, I walk you through the main points about how to play slurs, how to avoid bad technique of the slurs. So feel free to go ahead and watch it for a more complete overview and better practice. As you might remember from the previous workout, we will be going from the fret 5th up to the 7th, but if you have more time to practice, I would highly recommend that you just take and extend a little bit more the range. You can either go from 5th uh, fret to the 1st or from the 1st up to the 7th and do any variation that you want that kind of suits to your daily practice time. One of the most important parts of practicing slurs is that we get to control the rhythm. Therefore, in this workout, we will be playing first a combination playing with the right hand and then the same combination with the slur, something like that. So I'm adding this to the exercise because when you play before with the right hand also, you can clearly control the rhythm and that creates an acoustic guidance for your slur to come in the correct rhythm. Secondly, as you have just played the same combination, it will give you a motoric guidance where you can see that your finger actually needs to continue the same exact motion, the same exact speed. So in one end you will gain more synchronization for the normal tribal stroke and in the second you will also understand which kind of speed your finger needs to play the slurs. Little tip for beginners and intermediate players, I would highly recommend that you go now and grab your capo and set it on the 4th fret because that will be lowering your action very very much and will help you developing a much smoother technique without building up any tension. So using the capo for this kind of exercise, it is very very positive in the beginning. So time to get ready, tune the guitars and let's get started. Okay, 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 so let's start this workout. This first combination, as you see, we first play one and two, and then we do the same exact figuration, but with a slur. So the point of this is, as I said before in this uh, video, and also in the tutorial, is that you get to really master the exact rhythm, and because of this, the motion of the fingers. It is also actually very important that you can hear the slurred note as clearly as you hear the same note when you play it. Make sure that as you play, the slurred note comes really precisely with the metronome. So now we will continue with combinations starting from the first finger, so we go with the third. In this combination, many of you might experience something that happens really very often, which is the pinky finger lifting up because of some sort of reflexive tension, with the fact that we are using this other part of the hand with the third finger. The third finger and the fourth kind of belong together very much, so we need to really specially train that. So try actively to keep your pinky finger really close to the string that you're currently playing. As we approach the change of fret, make sure that you're connecting equally well the notes from the one fret, the previous fret, to the next one. The same way that you're connecting very well 
the notes you're playing on the same string. We go with combination 1 and 4. In here, it is very usual also that we extend a little bit too much the movement. Here I'm trying to kind of show you a average movement. I usually try to play it a bit closer to the fretboard, but a movement like this would be already quite okay. The problem is that if you go too far away from the fret with the um, pinky finger, once you have finished to play the slur, if you have a piece that has a sequence of slurs like this, ascending slurs, it's going to be really hard to build up speed because all this traveling time that your fingers have to make, which will inevitably end up in being a lot of tension. Okay, we go now for the sequence starting from second finger. This one might be a bit tiring if you do it right, just because we are really not used to be working these two fingers simultaneously for prolonged periods of time, so it is a very good exercise to do. As we are training here the middle fingers of the hand, let's call it like this, um, I want you to really make a picture on how you position your hand. Um, in this situation, your hand has to be completely parallel to the fretboard and your finger should not be approaching the string in diagonal or anything like that. Otherwise, it will force the fingers to stretch to reach the string and any stretch will create imprecisions. In this combination, really try to get the sound. Also like the previous one, maybe are not the easiest ones, but they are very important combinations to actually have trained because you will probably need them in many pieces, they are quite common. I also want you to notice the um, position of your thumb, it should be somewhere placed about the middle of the behind the fretboard and for big hands maybe a little bit higher, for smaller hands a bit lower, but it definitely doesn't need to be moving much. Concerning the action of the finger which is making the ascending slur, it should be an action that is short, so don't bring the finger too far away from the string, but it should be fast. That doesn't mean that you have to speed up the slur ahead of the time of the metronome, but you have to, let's call it, activate the finger in the last moment so that it comes against the string with speed. That will create a much richer tone of the slur and a much more precise slur technique. Now the key point in here is that you do a very fast action but you want to release and take away the tension immediately, otherwise we will end up with a very tense tan and that's definitely not what I'm looking for here. In my mind I like to think of it as if it was uh, electricity, it's just one moment, one shot and then it disappears. So take the action, just very quickly you go down and then you release. So there is more time of release, of rest, than actual action. This is what's going to give us the possibility to play slurs, also many slurs in a row, even in fast tempos, without tensing the speed, which that will cause the music to stuck, or eventually we are not able to play certain passages. So uh, the best way to practice is this, isolate the slurs with this type of routine, and then really detox your technique from tension. Okay, so here we start the descending slurs. In this exercise, we need really to take care of the hand positioning, otherwise it will be noisy every time we pull off the finger. So you need to make sure that your hand is parallel to the fretboard at all times, and 
do not contract or extend your fingers. What I mean by this is that the change from the higher strings to the lower is not made by the contraction and extension of the fingers, but the rotation of the entire arm. In order to be able to pull off the finger cleanly without listening to the string below, make sure that your finger is in a natural curve position. I talked a lot more in depth about this topic on the left hand tutorial that I did, but if I would have to sum up the most important concept for you, I would say that you have to keep your left hand as relaxed as possible, so your fingers should remain in their neutral position, which is not fully straight and not fully closed as a fist. If you take your relaxed hand position as a starting position, this is what you have to keep as you're playing this exercise. And the movement within the strings is facilitated from the arm and not the finger stretching or contracting. So this is a very key important concept to take away from this video. Notice also how I'm always playing and placing my fingers right beside the fret. That is also something that many people oversee but is quite important for not getting buzzes and having the nicest tone you can get. So always take care that your finger goes down and presses right beside the fret metal piece. So not on it because then it sounds muffled, but definitely not in the center of the fret. Just right there besides the fret piece. halfway through the slur routine so most important thing here is to keep your concentration on these elements that you're trying to improve be it the position the placement of your fingers the how you are standing with your back straight with your arm positioning and also how much you're pressing that is also sometimes a little bit overseen so i want you to as you go through it being that it's not really a difficult part this one Try to press just what's necessary for you to get the note, but not more, no more than what's necessary. advanced concept with this thing of how to press on the frets is as you go along and as you're trying to manage your pressure economy let's say I want you to gradually shift the pressure that you are doing with your thumb acting with the fingers as a clip and start using the weight of your arm so that your only source of movement and energy consumption is in the finger that needs to produce the slur but the rest of the hand can use your own body weight as a source of force to press the string down we are just two combinations away to finish this descending drill where the pinky finger is engaged for a descending slur, we might have the tendency to approach the string with the finger too flat. That means that our balance on the hand is shifting again to the first finger with this very common position where the fingers are slightly in the diagonal on the fretboard. You definitely don't want this to happen, so make sure that your hand goes back to full parallel against the fretboard. This not only will help you to make this descending slur a lot more cleaner, but also will get you used to play in a good position for all the fingers to be in, let's say, equal conditions to perform whatever you need to perform during your pieces.
As you go through these routines of mine, you will see that it's a recurrent thing that I speak about this hand preparation because it's of utter importance that you always keep your hand in the best conditions for you to perform in the best possible way. So not taking care of how you're actually building your way of functioning with the guitar along the fretboard is just going to damage your playing, so just keep an eye always on that. We are approaching the mixed combination with ascending and descending slurs so I hope that at this point you're already feeling quite confident about your motorics and about your movement because it's gonna get just a little bit more complicated. For the mixed combination, it's important that you think them in two parts. The first one where you play everything with the right hand and the same exact pattern with the ascending and descending slur. You will see how important it is that you have developed beforehand a good movement with the ascending slurs because when you hammer the string, you need to land on the same exact spot of your finger all the time so that you can produce the descending slur properly. This is why this routine doesn't have any crazy combination of fingers with stretches or super difficult because the point of it is that you really get a good movement and only from there you can build something strong. Up until now we didn't speak much about the right hand just because I want you to keep it simple. If it's easier for you to play with the thumb, go ahead and play everything with the thumb, also the higher strings, or if you prefer to play everything with index middle, then do so. The only thing I would not recommend is to play everything with the same finger, let's say with the index, repeating all the time, because then you get into the habit of always repeating the same finger and that is not going to help you with the pieces, the music pieces when you have repertoire to practice. So either the thumb all the way or just index middle or middle ring finger, which is a bit more difficult, or index ring finger. I leave the right hand choice really up to you because I personally like to just vary around as I go and I would usually never do the most frequent or the most usual fingering like index middle um, just so that I can train other combinations for the sound and for the motoric so I much rather do um, middle ring finger sometimes I even do the pinky finger just to train it a bit or many times I also practice with index thumb or middle with thumb and even ring finger with thumb because that's also combinations that are very helpful to have fresh and active for any eventual passage. halfway through the mix exercises and we are nearly done guys so just keep tight and keep focused you're doing really well Actually, it takes me really long to produce these videos, but I'm really happy to know that they might really help other people out there who maybe 
have not the possibility to have a teacher and it's a format that I actually like very much doing because I really feel like somehow I have you in front of me and I'm kind of helping you through your technique session so yeah if you find this useful just let me know in the comments and I will do some more also about the topics and the things that you're struggling any feedback or any input from you just to make it even more personal to what you're actually practicing just let me know just leave it in the comments I'll read you there For these mixed exercises, pay attention that when you play the first combination, we have the same note repeated, so then it comes the hammer-on. In that moment, right before the hammer-on happens, the finger might have the tendency to go far away from the string in order to prepare the landing or the hammer-on, but try to keep this distance short and remember it's about the speed not about how far away you start the action so try to keep it close and try to concentrate the speed As you move down to the basis with this uh, mixed combination, try to avoid any wrist bending, it's really not necessary, let the movement come from your elbow and your shoulder rather than your wrist. This combination is particularly hard for the hand to be agile. So as you can see in the free PDF, I suggested an extended version of it, going through many more frets. And feel free to do so if you have more time, the complete thing or just make it a bit more personal depending on the time that you have available. Getting closer and closer to the end, guys. One tip I can give you about this exercise is that they do work the best when you repeat them every day for a prolonged period of time. That's obviously it's not gonna change your life if you do it once, so try to use it as a routine, maybe implement it in your routine. If you don't have much time, just do a bit less, you can even shorten it and do one fret, but doing it on a regular basis it will really make a difference in long term. If it helps you very much to go through the exercise with this video, maybe it's more entertaining or something, then what you can do is just replay from the beginning of the workout and just repeat the same exercise with uh, the next set of three frets. In this case, I would recommend you start, let's say, from the fifth to the seventh as we're doing now, and then you repeat the same from the third until the fifth, and then if you still can have time, then just repeat it again from the first until the third. Just personalize it up to you and what you really need. If it helps to have a reference, I usually start my practice with slur uh, exercise just like this one. And I start on the fret 7 and then I go down until the first fret and then I come back. So all the frets until there. And I do every combination through all these frets. is the last exercise and we are nearly done i'm hoping you feel some tiredness already of the hand if you do feel a little bit of pressure in your muscles because of all the workout that is good of course if you do feel pain then i would suggest you take little breaks much longer than three seconds like here in the workout you can just pause it between the exercises shake your hand off a little bit and then continue if um, you're feeling this pressure right on the side of the hand, like on the opposite side of the thumb of the left hand, that means that you're really working the hand and that your muscles are training, which that is a positive sign. So just keep it going and you're in the good track. Little disclaimer, I leave up to everybody's 
logic to not press your hand until the limit if you feel any pain please stop it and do not force it no pain no gain in musicians um, many times can be um, pain equals tendinitis so you don't want to do that so please just be careful on that as I said before a little bit of um, tiredness is fine but tiredness not pain Come on, come on, some seconds more and we are done. So congratulations to make it until the very end. I'm sure that if you keep practicing this exercise every day for a little while, you will see how easier and how fast that becomes second nature to you. If you find this video useful, please drop a like like this. I know that this kind of content is helping you out, guys. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you want to have more of this content in the future. After this little warm-up session, I hope now you can go and enjoy your pieces and play your music. And as usual, I'll see you in the next video here in the channel with more classical guitar stuff. Take care and keep making music.